massive blues your source for all things Everton. I'm Jay Pelton and I'm here today to talk about Everton signing Iliaman and Dai from Marseille. I think this is a really, really good move for Everton. The kind of player that Everton should have been picking up from the Championship, you know, for the last at least six, seven years. Not going out and signing your Sigurdsons and your Clarsons and your Sanders, going out and buying players who've played in England. We've shown they can do it at a really, really high level, particularly when the championship was at its kind of peak, which I think was a few years ago. It's still very, very good now, but I think it's been a real good uh, breeding ground for talent over the last, let's say, decade in particular. And you've seen um team players go from that division and do really well in the Premier League, whether it be going out there on loan, going back to pairing clubs being sold on, um, or other players, you know, like Ndai, who has obviously progressed through the championship and, and done really well there. And the fact that he's gone to Marseille, I, frankly, hasn't actually mattered too much. I think we would have paid pretty much the same fee for him. We did pick him up from Sheffield United a couple of seasons ago. So, um, yeah, really good stuff. I think this is a terrific move for Everton. Obviously, he, he's, he's a second striker. He's a centre forward. He's a attacking midfield player, whatever you want to kind of call him. He plays just behind the striker. He can play that role really well. He can play a little bit further forward as well. He's obviously not a conventional nine by any stretch, but... I think feeding off someone, he can play really well in, in, in that regard. Um, and as I say, I think leading the line on his own, if he needs to, he looks capable of doing that as well. Whatever he can do at the Premier League level, we'll see. But yeah, I think it's really good for us that obviously he's not had a great season at Marseille. That's why we've been able to get him for you know face value pretty much. Um, but even still, I think his stats were I think, nine goal involvement over there in, in France. Not too bad, not too good. Didn't play loads towards the end of the season. Obviously, Marseille changed manager, what, two, three times in the campaign. It's chaos over there. It always is. I think he is actually a Marseille fan as well, which um, probably hasn't helped. Added to the pressure, went there for a decent fee. He signed quite a few players last summer and maybe didn't quite hit the heights. But um, I don't think you can hold that against him. And I say the return in terms of numbers isn't too bad. I don't think he did much in the last sort of dozen games of the season, so you're talking about that's kind of his level throughout the beginning half of the campaign. And uh, obviously, Marseille went deep into Europe as well, which is obviously uh, a feather in his cap. He's won 20 caps, I believe, for, for Senegal. He went to the World Cup in 22. I was played there with just a gay. I actually found a message I sent on WhatsApp when England played Senegal saying, ah, oh, well, you know, we basically about to look off for and die here because he's um, a really good player. He didn't do much in the game. I can't remember if he even. Um, started wherever he came on. I think he must have started when I said that, but um, he's a player I've, I've liked for the last couple of years. Obviously, he was at the Championship uh, a couple of seasons back with Chef U. 25 goal involvements, basically carried them to promotion. I think you go back and watch his goals there, he's kind of got the hint of Decorey about him in terms of he will just pop up in the box, he'll be in the six yard box, he'll head goals in, he'll flick them over his knees and his calves and his his feet and he'll, he'll just sort of force the ball in over the line, which Decorey's been, to be fair, really terrific at, certainly first half of last season or throughout 2023, I would say, you know, February onwards when when Deitch came in, he was he was really good at sort of getting on the end of things and, and forcing the ball in. Um, and look, I'll always love Abdullah Decorey, but he does have some shortcomings. I think the shortcomings are the fact that he's, he's not very good with the ball, his feet, running with the ball, not a strength of his. Um, in sort of tighter areas, okay, you can strive forward, obviously, but I think when you need someone a bit more for less, that's where Lee Manandai comes in. He's terrific, uh, got terrific close control. Uh, so he's running with the ball, he's excellent, got some terrific skill in that regard. Can run with the ball, can strive forward with it, can take on players, got long legs, he can kind of get in there. And um, yeah, he's a player I'm actually super excited for. And I think I was saying to someone the other day that I'm as sure of him being a good sign as I have been for quite a while in a player. I can't remember the last time. I saw a sign of player and I thought, yeah, he'll definitely he'll definitely do well for us here and that's what we want. Okay, he's twenty four, it's not like he's a young kid anymore, but hopefully that works in our favour. We've got some other young players in the squad, obviously, and uh, we're gonna want them to improve um, while players like Indai and 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 McNeil, etc., kind of reach their prime. So I think this is a great signing, it's an area we need to be strengthening, and it's been a real exciting start to the window, which is a surprise. Definitely did not see that coming, but I'm super excited for this move. Let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know where you think it's be best utilised, what his role should be, and uh, who else you want to try and bring in over the summer. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time. Nice one.